Bob Sochi does a great job, play-by-play voice for New England Patriots. Kind enough to join us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Bob, good to uh, catch up with you, my friend. I know it's been a busy week. Uh, I know you got a couple moments, so I appreciate it. Um, let me ask you this. First of all, as a play-by-play guy, I- I'm-, I'm sure you're not getting tired of this. <laughs> no, uh, it's uh, it's surreal, Rich. I mean, I say that every year when, when – uh, and I've had the opportunity now three times in the last four seasons. I've only been a Patriots broadcaster for five years, but I've said it every trip that, you know, I'm going to enjoy every second of this if I can because, you know, this isn't supposed to happen um, very often. <laughs> and, and, and yet I've had the tremendous fortune uh, of it happening uh, as often as it has. But I understand how, uh, I, I think, I understand how special this experience is and you know it's something not to be taken for granted even if in new england we've become accustomed to it because uh, it's not supposed to happen in the national football league as you know the way the league is structured yep. and the history of the league uh, for a team to go to a super bowl three three times in a four-year span as the patriots did in the early to mid 2000s you know re- remarkable in, in, in itself but to do it twice in a span of 17 years uh, i don't think it's, i think it's beyond description I, I get the sense, and and again, you know, you you understand this. We're in the Eagles' backyard; it's Eagles' territory. So a lot of the fan base sees it one way. It, it seems as though, from their perspective, well, this Patriot team is going to be a pushover, um, and it should be an easy game. Now, let me ask you: Is this one of the weaker teams? great weaker teams over the last several years because i i think it's ludicrous because at the end of the day you got brady you got belichick there's a reason they're here year in and year out but i mean how about this team compared to um say last year or the last several years you know it's, it's it's funny rich because even in new england there's been a similar narrative in that you know the patriots success this year especially but even to some degree the last several has been in large part attributed to the weakness of the rest of the AFC or the relative mediocrity, even of the top teams in the AFC. And the thing I'll say about this team, uh, you know, regardless of, of what everybody else has done or hasn't done in the league, is that th- this team has proven itself remarkably resilient. And I think part of the thing that you know lends to that narrative this year is the fact that the Patriots got off to such a difficult start, especially defensively. And there were a lot of uncharacteristic breakdowns early in the season. They were prone to allowing big plays. They were blown out by Kansas City in the yep. season opener, of course, on prime time. Then a few weeks later, you know, they got into a shootout with Deshaun Watson in Houston and remarkably pulled that game out. They were beaten by Cam Newton in a similar kind of game. And uh, there were serious and legitimate questions about the Patriots' defense. And it was, it was fascinating to me because in the offseason, back in March, when the Patriots had traded for Brandon Cooks and it traded for Coney Ely, who'd never worked out for the team uh, going back to really the first day of training camp. And it made some other moves with the signing of Stephon Gilmore and the acquisition of a guy like Rex Burkhead, who I think a lot of people thought is a sleeper. There was talk of 16-0 and in New England. And suddenly after four games at 2-2, two and two, there was talk of the dynasty uh, ending, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, I, I, it's it's just the, it's the way it is for the Patriots, uh, and especially back home. Uh, but I, I don't I, I don't advise uh, anyone, and I know the Eagles aren't going to do this. Uh, I have too much respect for the guys that played for the Pats uh, to, to expect uh, anything other than total respect yep. for the Patriots, just as it's going to exist from New England toward Philadelphia. But the Patriots, I, I think, often get labeled a finesse team. This is a tough team. It's a resilient team. It's got a lot of guys who've had to uh, you know in, in evolve as the years gone along, and they've done that. Uh, conversely, similar to, to really the Eagles as well, overcoming injuries, being very resilient, losing all pros, losing Pro Bowl players, losing their franchise quarterback. Um, the one stat, you look at Brady's been sacked 35 times, and and you know this. We, we always like to use this phrase, you got to move him off his spots. You look at the Eagles and their front four, that pass rush. You know, they need to go in there and try to wreck this game. Um the Patriots, they got to be wary of this with that offensive line because you know Schwartz is he's going to open it up a little bit. Um, you can rotate some players in. That's what the Eagles do. They've got Kendricks and Graham and Barnett and Cox and Howie Long, and then you got Jenkins who might come up from a safety blitz. So to me, I think this game's won or lost in the trenches. I mean, if, if the Patriots control the line of scrimmage, um, their offensive line can kind of keep that pass rush at bay and give Brady time to throw. Well, we know what can happen. But if you start to move them and get them off the spots and hit them a little bit and maybe get that one rare pick or that rare blunder, get them off the field, it's a totally different ballgame. 
Well, that's that's been the formula, uh, certainly to try to beat the Patriots, especially on this stage, since the Giants did it, not once but twice. And we hear that a lot uh, when the Patriots are, are playing a, a team with a good defense, especially up front. The key is the offensive line and how it protects Tom Brady. I expand. I think it's it's really more than the offensive line for the Patriots. It's the entire offensive unit because so much of the Patriots' success in avoiding sacks and ultimately the contact with Brady is a function of the total offense. It's it, you know if you look at the Patriots' offensive line, for example, how many of those guys were coveted coming out of college or even throughout their professional careers by other teams. And so you've got a guy like an undrafted center, David Andrews, yep. next to Joe Tooney, and next to Shaq Mason, who played in a triple option offense. And they're flanked by Cam Fleming at right tackle or Adrian Waddle, uh, you know, a couple of guys that uh, you know probably a lot of people around the league didn't think belonged in the NFL, at least in, in Fleming's case. And then you have Nate Solder, I think, is, a, is an undervalued player in New England at left tackle. But it's getting the ball out quickly. It's the it's the receiver who's either Edelman in the past or Amendola who's lined up in the slot. It gets open immediately and allows Brady to beat the pressure. It's the running back like James White or Deion Lewis chipping a pass rush and being very solid and good in pass protection, but also having the, the keen sense of timing to release at the right time and, and make big plays against pressure with receivers running after the catch. It's the other guys in the in, in the offense, like Rob Gronkowski, being able to win matchups again, regardless of who he's going up against. That allows Brady to get the ball out more than anything else. It's Tom's ability to recognize where the pressure is coming yep. from. That's why it's so important if you can get to him with four men. I, I think though the one thing about this offensive line, I will say, they heard a lot of the same things against Tennessee. Granted, not the Eagles' defense. They heard a lot of the same things last week. There was pressure from Jacksonville. Very athletic, very fast team. But ultimately, the Patriots more than held their own. That generally has been the track record because they have one of the great offensive coaches in football history, I think. And that's offensive line coach Dante Scarnecchia, who's been there for 30-plus years. They'll be ready. Ultimately, may come down to that. I will say this, and you made the point about the, the depth on the defensive line. Last year, the Patriots... You know, almost succumbed to the pressure of the Falcons with their quickness up front. Then the Falcons got worn down late in that game defensively. The Patriots took advantage of the fatigue factor, and it's going to be interesting to see because I don't know if they can do that against a team like the Eagles given the way they rotate. No, that's an excellent point. You were reading my mind on that. And and, and when you bring in veteran guys, uh, you know, you, you make a trade for Jernigans, you got depth there with Allen, and then you make the move for uh, Long as well. You mentioned Gronk, and to me, that's also the matchup to watch because – he, he's going to play. I mean, we, we know that. Whether he's 85%, 90%, he's going to play. Even if he doesn't catch his 8, 9, 10 balls, he's still going to make an impact because you stick a linebacker on him, he's too strong. He can blow by a linebacker and a safety. So, you know, I look at, to me, the Patriots, the way they kind of dink and dunk and Brady gets rid of the ball, they, they just, the receivers are tough. And, and if you're the Eagles, you know, you want to crack these guys. You can't want, you don't want them to get, you don't want Brady to get in rhythm, but you also don't want the receivers to get comfortable out there, whether they're in the slot or you flank them, wheel routes, or you're just, you know, under, it doesn't matter. You know, the, the secondary, we've seen the Eagles secondary at times this year get beat with that double move, you know, where they can stretch and go over the top. It's going to be tough to do, but if, if they let Brady get into that rhythm, listen, he'll take that 8, 9, 10 yard out. I mean, he's, you know, just he'll just kill you softly. Uh, no question about it, but this team can also burn you deep. And I think one of the things that, uh, you know, we've seen from the Patriots this year offensively, and in some ways out of necessity, because of Edelman's injury in the preseason, and also they've manage Danny Amendola's snap count very well this year, and Gronk has been in and out a bit uh, since the Miami game, of course. Uh, but I think by design, too, back in free agency when they acquired, or rather the, the, the uh, free agency period opened, and then via trade they acquired Brandon Cooks and then made a trade right before the season began for Pope said It's become more vertical. And Chris Hogan, of course, a New Jersey guy, has lended to that for the Patriots. So they can, they can attack you in a lot of different ways. Naturally, if you're going to go deep, you've got to hold on to the ball longer, which you know, presents a problem if the Patriots aren't able to protect Brady. I think a, a key is, is in between, and it's the running backs in this game against the Eagles linebackers. 
because Jacksonville, although Telvin Smith got burned badly in pass coverage last week, it was mostly against Danny Amendola, a wide receiver. When he and Miles Jack were up against a running back, you know, we, what we usually see is those guys catch a ball and they peel away for five, six, seven yards at least after the catch. We saw last week again, or two weeks ago against the Jaguars in the AFC Championship was James White catches a ball, pivots, and he's down. He's a yard and a half, two yards short of the first down marker. Same with Deion Lewis, who's very elusive with space. So it's going to be interesting to me if the Patriots can get back on track because when they have not only those two, but Rex Burkhead, uh, and move those guys around uh, and, and, and create uh, mismatches against the defense, you know, that's when their offense finds its rhythm. And along those lines, too, playing up-tempo, playing fast. They had success with that against the Jags again a couple of weeks ago. Wouldn't be surprised if they tried to do a little bit of that against the Eagles at least, again, to try to avoid some of those substitutions on that defensive front. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's tough to run uh, against the Eagles, especially – uh, sideline to sideline, you, you know, between the tackles, a little bit of success, even though they're stingy. But those linebackers, they've they've got some speed to the outside. I mean, that you know, I'm talking page, about yards after the catch, balls over the middle of the deep as well, which is just as good as a three or four yard uh, uh, rush on first down. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a, it's a to me, it's just it's an amazing matchup when you look at the game within the game. And you know, I'm curious, what's your what's the perception on Nick Foles? Right, because obviously it's a different animal to Carson Wentz. Wentz goes down, but Foles hasn't turned the ball over uh, in the postseason. Doug has shown you it will be aggressive, something Jacksonville didn't do with Bortles late in the uh, first half where they sat on those timeouts. I mean, mm-hmm. the one thing is to beat New England, y- you got to be aggressive. I mean, that's you have to. But what's what's the thought, what's the sentiment coming from New England on a guy like Nick Foles and the type of run that he's had right now with the Eagles? <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of funny, though, I have to say, because, you know, I, I, I hear a lot about Jacksonville last week, and I know that there's the, – the, the, they you know, have been criticized a lot in that situation, but you know, that's the way Jacksonville managed Blake Bortles all year long. And Jacksonville's in control of that game offensively by not asking Bortles to make plays that he wasn't capable of making. And they called a brilliant game until you know maybe the last minute of the first half, and then they got back on track in the second half for for a little while to expand on their lead. Uh, and then all in the lead, you know, they got a little aggressive, and he threw a couple incompletions midway through the fourth quarter that stopped the clock and didn't burn much time off, and that, I think, allowed the Patriots to come back. So sometimes you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't against New England with Tom Brady. That's a fair point. That's last, a fair point. Last year, last year in the Super Bowl, I mean, all the Falcons had to do was hand the ball off and, <laughs> and run it and kick a field goal, and they won, They would win in the, in the right. fourth quarter. They got aggressive, and it backfired. So, yeah. you know, I, I always – and, and, and that's why I'm skeptical of the perception of Nick because Foles. you're there, though, right? You know, you're yeah. you're you're there. We're looking from the outside, and I watched that game, and I came on the air afterwards. To be honest with you, full disclosure, I was like, you know, I was torn. But the more I thought about it, I, I would have taken a couple shots if I was Jacksonville. But ultimately, it showed that they didn't have the trust and confidence in Bortles. And you know, and that's the thing about Nick Foles too, for me, Rich, is because I think a lot of people in New England, uh, and, and I'm not talking about the players again, or people of the Patriots, but it's the media and, and people that do what, what you and I do. And I think people have had disrespect for him. That's why the Eagles were an underdog at home for two rounds of the playoffs. And I look at this guy's record now. He's, had, he's played a brilliant game and a half, especially in this year's playoffs. He's had three playoff starts. For whatever the, the quarterback rating is worth, however it's computed, he's had over 100 rating in all three starts. And again, it's a function. I look at the offense, and I look at the problems the Patriots have had defending Kansas City in recent years. And Doug Peterson coming from Andy Reid's coaching tree and having been around him, of course. And, and you mentioned uh, his aggressiveness. It's not only that, it's, it's the, the diversity of the offense, the number of tight ends, the, the, the running back like Clement, who, you know, he might have a big role in this yep. game because the Patriots linebackers have been vulnerable. I mean, everybody, I think, uh, who plays New England, if they have a back who can catch the ball, you know, they're going to try to establish a mismatch. And speaking of Bortles, he missed a couple of passes last week, including one on Jacksonville's last series that could have been a score to Leonard Fournette down the left sideline. And, and you know, I, I look at uh, all the different things that Philadelphia can do to try to exploit the Patriots with misdirection and the bunch formations. And they can beat you deep and, and in intermediate and short. And so I think if Foles is a guy who can – make all the plays they need him to make in this game. They don't need him to run around like Marcus Mariota or some of the other quarterbacks who are mobile who've given the past problems in the past, like Russell Wilson. If he executes the offense and they're able to do what Kansas City has been able to do with Alex Smith, at quarterback, granted, Foles less mobile than Smith, 
you know, nonetheless, it's going to be problematic for the Patriots. Uh, last one before I let you get out of here. And again, uh, Bob Sochi, kind enough to join us on a busy Thursday, does the play-by-play for the New England Patriots. Um, you know, you look at what Brady and Belichick and the Patriots – have done the model of consistency right the level of success the high level of success winning championship after championship and and titles and AFC East titles and the whole litany Super Bowls and playoffs I mentioned the other day on the air it it seems as though the moves that Howie Roseman made uh, you're bringing in guys that have familiarity guys with chips on their shoulder guys that they want to deem Eagles players you know that character that kind of mold they're they're trying to emulate exactly what a franchise like the Patriots have done. It's like that model. Let's start bringing in our our quote guys uh, like the Patriots do. You know, the Patriot way. And it seems it's it's never more evident than this year because like you alluded to at the top of the interview, it seemed as though people are looking at this as it's a foregone conclusion to give me the Eagles are going to win this game and the Patriots, the dynasty is about to end. It's over. You know, Brady is great, but he's old and Belichick, you know, it's his time, shelf life, this, that, the other thing. And to me, I just marvel at it. I don't have to like it, but you got to respect it. It's amazing what they've been able to do for 15, 16, 17 plus years as an organization. Well, that question. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I understand why uh, there is resentment toward the Patriots for you know uh, fans uh, of other teams, because, you know, as an example, I grew up in upstate New York, and I was a I was a Mets fan, and I hated the Yankees. But they always won. The Mets, when I was a kid, usually lost, and I know what that's like. I didn't like the Dallas Cowboys my entire life because you know they were America's team, and then they had a dynasty again under Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones early, of course, uh, in the '90s. So yeah, I understand how people feel about the Patriots uh, from the outside, but being and I and I say on the inside, I'm not truly on the inside. Right, there are right. very few, but. As someone who naturally draws a check, paycheck, and I know where, my, <laughs> where the check is signed, <laughs> I, 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 but I, I said this at the time when I was given the opportunity to follow the great Gil Santos as the Patriots play-by-play broadcaster that uh, they're the best organization in sports, and I meant it at the time, and I and I'm uh, you know even more convinced today. Robert Kraft and the tone that is set at the top of the organization, and then it's Bill Belichick and then it's Tom Brady, and, of course, it's all the other complimentary pieces. And I think one of the things that I'd be very encouraged about with Philadelphia, assuming he comes back fully healthy and and able to do all the things that he showed he can do this year, is is that Carson Wentz, from the outside, seems like such a a strong character guy, uh, a leader, playmaker, somebody who's, who's, uh, you know, blessed with a a tremendous skill set as a quarterback, but beyond that, has a lot of the intangibles that I think are most important in, in terms of playing that position in the NFL. It's one of the things that Belichick has often stressed as a quarterback. You have to make good decisions, and you have to be a, a strong leader. Don't turn the ball over. Yeah. And make good decisions and be accurate. And I think, you know, of all the things that Tom Brady does wonderfully, uh, maybe better than anybody else in the game's history. I think one of the things that often gets overlooked by people on the outside, and even in, 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 you know, in, in New England a lot, is what he does to set the tone day in, day out with his leadership and his willingness as a teammate to be like everybody else in that locker room and on that practice field. Uh, and when it comes to a game in that you know, you'll have an undrafted free agent who, who gets signed in training camp and he comes in and Tom Brady knows who he is. Tom Brady is the first guy to go meet him and, and, right. and welcome him to the team. It's Tom Brady who's out on the field first for drills and leaves last after uh, training camp practice adjourns. It's Tom Brady who's constantly demanding that his receivers and everybody else on offense raise the level of their performance. And I've heard you know, a number of Patriot veterans say that you know the culture they have, the tone they have, and the team concept that exists in that New England locker room, you know, is a reflection of what Belichick has tried to instill, but also what Brady embodies and exemplifies as the quarterback and teammate. That uh, should be a good one on Sunday and many Super Bowl Fifty Two, the Pats and the Eagles. Bob, always appreciate a couple of moments, pal. Great stuff. Enjoy it on Sunday, my friend. Hey, thanks, Richard. I appreciate it. All right, you Looking got it. Be well. You got it, Bob Sochi, uh, Patriots play-by-play voice.